What is going on everyone? I hope you are all having a fantastic day. So as you might know, I have made separate videos on both the SoFi Money and the Robinhood cash management platforms, and I have personally used both of these accounts for quite some time. And since these are direct competitors with each other, I thought it was time that I put them head to head and figure out which platform is truly the best. So anyone who has seen my videos knows that I love SoFi, but I want to keep this as unbiased as possible. So I really am just going to present you with the facts that will allow you to make an informed decision and then give you my thoughts on everything at the end of the video. So if you want a breakdown of both of these platforms and a way that you can get a sign up bonus from both of them, then be sure to stick around to the end. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe since next week I will be launching a series of videos where we go in depth on some of the most popular online banking platforms and I definitely don't want you to miss that so make sure you subscribe. With that being said, let's jump right into it. Okay, so if you do want a really detailed breakdown of each of these platforms individually, then like I said, I did a separate video on both of them, and I'll be sure to leave those links down in the description below if you do want to check that out. But I just want to go through everything that each of these platforms has to offer and compare every single feature directly with each other so that we can get a clear picture of which one is the best. So the first way that both of these platforms shine is that these are two of the only services that I am aware of that seamlessly integrate your banking and investing accounts. Now there are other platforms platforms like Acorns that will allow you to invest and spend your money through their Acorns spend. But if you've used Acorns before, then you know that this isn't a real investing platform since you can't hand pick your own investments. Instead, you can only really invest in their diversified portfolios. And because of that, they're not a part of today's debate. Now, while both SoFi and Robinhood allow you to spend your uninvested money, there is one really important difference that actually gives Robinhood's cash management an advantage in my opinion. So with SoFi, you obviously can have your SoFi money account and you can also open a separate SoFi investing account. And while it is really easy to transfer money from one account to another since they are the same company, with Robinhood, the whole pitch is that you actually are able to spend your uninvested cash. Now, what this means is that anything that is not invested in your Robinhood account is automatically in your cash management account. And you don't have to transfer that money back and forth because it's already right there for you when you're ready to spend it. This isn't a huge deal, but it is an important distinction and a place that Robinhood actually has an advantage since with SoFi, it's two separate accounts and you have to transfer money between them in order to spend it in your SoFi money account. But today we're specifically focusing on the banking features and the checking features of these accounts. So I don't want to bring in the investing side of things too much. Now on a related topic, if you do use something like Mint to keep track of all of your accounts and budgets like I do, then I have noticed that platforms like Mint will actually count the money in your Robinhood account twice since it counts it once as cash and once as investments. So that is just a minor hassle that I have noticed personally since this doesn't happen with SoFi or any other linked account that I have. Again, not a huge deal, but I did want to make you aware of that. Now, as far as interest goes, both of these accounts are pretty low due to the low interest rates across the board right now. But at the time of making this video in August of 2020, Robinhood Cash Management offers 0.3% on all of your uninvested cash, while SoFi Money offers 0.25%. So at the moment, Robinhood does have a slight advantage over SoFi as far as interest goes, but I will say that at one point, SoFi had an interest rate that was higher than 2%, while the highest that Robinhood Cash Management ever got was 1.8%. The reason I mention this is because interest rates across the board will hopefully start to rise again in the next few years, and we will see those interest rates once again return to what they used to be. Now, in the way of checking features, both of these accounts are almost identical. They both offer a debit card, which you can use to spend your uninvested money. And they're both on the MasterCard network. So they're literally identical as far as where you can use them. Now, this may not be important to some of you, but for some reason, I really care about what my credit cards and debit cards look like. I'm not sure why this is, but there are some people like myself who like to have different options with what their card looks like. And Robinhood does have a few different colors, as well as a stars and stripes option if you're into that kind of thing. Well, SoFi only has one debit card option. Again, I know this might sound ridiculous to some of you, but I'm sure there are others who, like me, actually care about what the card looks like for whatever reason. Now, in addition, both accounts offer fraud monitoring, location protection, and other small features like being able to lock your card remotely in the case that you do lose it. One area that Robinhood does have a slight edge is they boast that they have over 75,000 ATMs, while SoFi claims that they have 55,000. Now, remember that these are just the ATMs that are on their respective networks, and you can always use an ATM outside of that network, you just have to pay a separate fee. 
However, one interesting thing that I have noticed is that there are three ATMs within a 10 mile radius of where I live, and both the Robinhood and SoFi cards are able to be used at all of those ATMs. So in my experience, they're pretty much the same in that regard. Okay, so far you might be thinking that these accounts are pretty much identical, and if anything, Robinhood has a slight advantage in the sense that its ATM network is a little larger, and at the moment it does have a slightly better interest rate. However, this was the point in my unbiased research that I found that one platform started to excel far away from the other. Earlier, I mentioned the Mint budgeting app, which if you're not familiar, it allows you to track your spending habits, keep tabs on your bank accounts and investments, and also keep track of your credit score as well. Now, you can integrate your Robinhood cash management account into something like Mint or another app in order to keep track of your spending. And other than that double counting issue that I talked about earlier, this does work pretty well. However, SoFi has its very own budgeting feature called SoFi Relay that in my opinion is just as good, if not better than Mint. This feature is right under the same application as your SoFi money and SoFi investing accounts, and it allows you to do all of the same things that we just talked about, like keeping track of your spending, your investments and in other bank accounts, and your credit score as well. So while it isn't a huge deal to have to input your accounts into Mint, if you do like to track all of your spending like I do, then SoFi has this feature integrated right under their platform, while Robinhood requires a third-party app. But that's not where the advantages stop for one platform. In addition to all of the things that we just talked about, SoFi also offers physical checks, which may seem like an outdated system, but it is really nice to have physical checks in the case that you do need them. And this is another thing that Robinhood just simply doesn't offer at the moment. Another difference I noticed was that if you applied for the Robinhood cash management card, there was a wait list of well over 200,000 people, and it took nearly six months for me to get off the waiting list and receive my card. Now, I'm not sure what that looks like today because I've had this card for well over a year, but it's clear that the demand for the Robinhood cash management feature far exceeded their ability to meet that demand. And because of that, a lot of people like myself had to wait a long time just to access this feature. But when I signed up for my SoFi money account, I applied in a few minutes on my phone and received my card within a matter of days. Now, in the way of customer service, there's really no competition here because Robinhood is notorious for basically having non-existent customer service. At the moment, they don't even have a live call center. And as someone who has tried contacting them for various questions and issues, it is a painful process of automated reports replies and redirecting towards other departments, and it can take weeks before getting an actual answer to your question. In comparison, SoFi has a seven day per week call center that is US-based individuals who are knowledgeable and extremely helpful. Everyone's experiences are gonna be a little different, but in my experience, I have called SoFi three separate times, and every time I have been on the phone with a real person in under two minutes. And frankly, that is impressive for the banking industry across the board. Everyone I've talked to has always been extremely helpful and knowledgeable, and knew exactly how to solve my problem without having to pass me on to another department or manager. But if that wasn't enough, there are a few more things that really put the nail in the coffin if you ask me. On their debit card, SoFi offers some amazing benefits like cash back, discounts on all sorts of services that you probably use like Hulu and Disney Plus, and some amazing warranty extension and purchase protection programs as well, which are things that are almost never offered on a debit card and are usually only offered on paid credit cards with really high annual fees. Honestly, I don't know why Robinhood doesn't offer these features because just like SoFi, they are also on the MasterCard network. So I really don't know why they're not able to negotiate these considering they are a better known platform. But at the moment, they just don't offer any sort of rewards with your spending. So those first features that we talked about are pretty much identical and it's easy to keep the competition unbiased, especially as someone who is presenting that information. But eventually the list of features for Robinhood simply stops while SoFi continues to excel across the board and offers a slew of things that are just not there for Robinhood. Now, one last thing if you are still on the fence, both of these companies offer a sign-up bonus, but they look very, very different. Currently, Robinhood will give you a free stock worth up to $250 when you open an account with them. And that might sound fantastic and awesome, and yeah, you might actually get a stock worth $250, but in my experience, it's usually just five to $10. Now, SoFi offers a flat cash reward that is currently $25, but it's constantly changing, and it used to be $50, then it was 75. So be sure to check what the signup bonus currently is using that first link down in the description. So at the end of the day, it's really up to you and what features you value the most. If you are strictly looking for an investing platform that also gives you the option to spend your uninvested money, then I would definitely give Robinhood a shot. 
since they really emphasize the investing side of things. However, if your priority is banking and managing your money over investing, but you still want the option to invest, then I would definitely give SoFi a shot. And by the way, they will also give you an additional $75 when you open a SoFi Invest account. So that's a total of $100 if you do want both of these accounts open. Now, I really did try my best to remain unbiased, but as you can probably tell, SoFi wins this battle in my opinion, but it's really all about what is best for you and what your goals are. All I will say is there's a reason that I talk about SoFi in pretty much every video, and I'm just amazed by the features that they offer and the high level of customer service. And as someone who has used pretty much every well-known online bank, I can say that SoFi at the moment is my favorite. However, everyone's needs are different. So if you wanna give Robinhood or SoFi a shot, be sure to use those links down in the description below to get your free money, because who doesn't love free money? And also be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications because like I said earlier in the video, I'm going to be kicking off a series of videos where we're going to look at every single popular online bank like Chime, Ally, Discover, and Varo. I truly want to recommend the best services possible to you, so I want to take a deep look into each of these services and figure out if SoFi truly is the best or if there's a better option out there in 2020. So make sure you do subscribe to see all of those videos that will be coming up. Hit the like button if you need to get value out of today's video. And of course, take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.